Kailash Through the Mystic Eye is a virtual journey with Sadhguru through the mystical terrain of Nepal and Tibet. This week, Sadhguru explores how the whole land of Nepal was structured and established as a tantric and spiritual body. There is an interesting story about how Nepal got its name. There was, according to a legend, a Hindu sage named Ne, who lived in the Kathmandu Valley thousands of years ago in the prehistoric era. Pal means protection. As the area was under the protection by sage Ne, it became known as Nepal. The kings of different dynasties have ruled the region since then. Nepal used to be the only constitutionally declared Hindu nation on the planet till 2008, when it was declared a federal democratic republic and a secular state. The country's rugged terrain is made up of peaks and valleys. The world's 10 tallest mountains, including Mount Everest, the highest point on the planet, are all a part of Nepal. Over 240 peaks tower at over 20,000 feet above sea level and the plains are fertile and humid, making them suitable for agriculture. The first people of this land were the Nevars, who spoke the unique Nepali Bhasha. They developed a sophisticated urban civilization not seen elsewhere in the Himalayan foothills. The contribution to art, sculpture, architecture, literature, music, agriculture and cuisine is evident in Nepal even today. However, Mass migration into Nepal has resulted in the Nevars making up just 5% of the population in their own homeland and their rich language and culture is rapidly becoming extinct. In Nepal today, 81% of the population is Hindu. But they follow a complex combination of Vajrayana Buddhism and Tantric Hinduism, also referred to as Buddha Marg and Shiv Marg. Over a period of time, elements of these two religions have been interwoven into the ancient Bon religion, making a third unique amalgamation called Tibetan Buddhism. In large parts of India, was like this at one time, that the whole geography of the place was created like a living body. They established like how in the human body the energy centers are, like this they established these bodies. Many kings sponsored these great adventures of turning their whole kingdom into a spiritual body. Nepal is one place where it is much more alive than what you would find in India, simply because the whole culture supported it. Even now for ninety-eight percent of the population in Nepal, going to the temple and seeking their mukti is still the highest thing in their mind, which is largely lost in India, yes? Mukti is not the highest thing, going to America is the <laughs> highest thing. <laughs> So, when the very psychology of a civilization was completely geared towards ultimate liberation, these things could be done, that the very geography could be converted into a, a living spiritual body. So, Pashupatinath is seen as the forehead of Shiva. So, where does Shiva fit into all this? We'll look at that later, okay? <clears throat> he creeps into everything. How? Why? We'll look at that later. Pashupatinath is seen as the forehead of Shiva and his body flows, one body to the south 
another body to the west, one head, two bodies. These two bodies represent two fundamental systems of tantra. The southern body is the right hand and the western body is the left hand. When I say tantra, I am not talking about the tantra that you are hearing of today. Tantra does not mean unbridled promiscuity. Today, the word tantra evokes uh, all kinds of nasty things in people's minds because uh, most of the information that you know about tantra is uh, rebound from the American shores. Even in India, if you go into any bookstore, most of the books on tantra are written by American authors. That is not the kind of tantra I'm talking about. Tantra means a technique or a knowledge or a certain technology of being able to unmake life and make life again. Those of you who come from India and maybe you have spent little time to look at the calendar art in India, you would have seen that sometimes there is a yogi or sometimes a woman who has taken off her head or his head, placed it in their hand and walking. Have you seen this picture? So this basic tantric imagery is to tell you that this is about the mechanics of life. Understanding this machine so perfectly that you can completely dismantle it and put it back. So based on this, and when I use the word tantra, I want you to understand from this context, not from… In this context, they created two tantric bodies with one head. The forehead is here in Pushupatinath. The Sahasrar, the top of the head is in Kalpanath. What is above is in the Muktinath, what is beyond is Kailash.